today on Chapter 24 from Las Vegas, Nevada, originally from San Diego, California, hip-hop artist K.O. Hustle. I am your host, DJ Architect, and here in the studio with me are Vicky Vic and Big Sherm, and we'd like to welcome you to Chapter 24 on the Chapter of the Architect. One, two, one, two, two. We dedicate this one to the hip-hop classic. You are now listening to the Chapter of the Architect podcast with DJ Architect and Vicky Vic. What's going on, everyone? Once again, you're hanging out here in the chapter of The Architect. I am your host, DJ Architect. In the studio with us, of course, you got Vicky Vic. We got Big yep. Sherm. This is chapter 24, ladies and gentlemen. Our special guest on the phone from Las Vegas, originally from San Diego, is K.O. Hustle. K.O. Hustle, thank you so much for your time, my brother. How you doing today? I'm wonderful. How are you? Man, we're good, brother. We're over here. Uh, we're looking forward uh, to the chapter, chapter 24. We got you here on the phone with us, so we're feeling blessed. Uh, we're sitting back, drinking on our adult drink of choice, and uh, we're going to get this started, man. Listen, so you're originally from San Diego, correct? Born and raised in Southeast. My man, let's talk about what inspired K.O. Hustle to get into music. Give us that that exact moment in your life when you said to yourself, hey, this is what I want to do. What happened? Tell us about that moment. Well, it, it ironically, you know, a tragedy turned into an enlightenment. You know, I, my sister used to write poetry a lot. And uh, when my grandmother died, I wrote my first rap. And uh, it actually... Everybody loved it. I, I, it was a poem at first, but from that, you know, I wrote it as a rap and recited it as a poem. So after that, I, I kind of got in to write rap. Then, you know, I linked up with uh, my partner, Young Smokey, R.I.P. Back then, uh, he was out of Lemon Grove and he rapped. And uh, me and him linked up and we started a group in high school. And then uh, that moved on to me working with my little bro, Mass, and he, um, he made beats, and I had learned how to record on the computer. So, you know, we was going hand in hand. He uh, pretty much showed me the little structure with making the beats with Fruity Loops. I showed him uh, the structure with recording on Cakewalk. And right. Yeah, I remember Cakewalk. He was recording my closet. Mm. Yeah, we was recording my closet back in 98. Wow. Wow, that's interesting. That's interesting. I recall messing around with Cakewalk. Uh, for a short period of time, I was uh, in Okinawa, Japan, in the Marine Corps, and I downloaded Cakewalk. Unfortunately, I really couldn't uh, master the program, so I got frustrated. There was no YouTube back then, so I didn't have any tutorials. I got real frustrated with it, and I gave up on it. You still you still use Fruity Loops to this to this day, Kale? To this day, I use Fruity Loops. Okay. As soon as they put it, made that Mac Beta uh, program, I was back on it like I never left. That's tight. So do you, like, how do you do it with beats? Do you try to use your own beats, or is it a mixture of your own beats and other people's beats that you'd like to get on your work? Well, when I first started out, I was a producer first, because I started my label back in 03. Oh, no And I no had way. artists I was producing for. Yeah. So really? I actually didn't start rapping in 06. So me making beats now is more of a necessity. You know, I'm trying to focus more on the artist, the artist side of it. KO. Oh, I could be from everywhere. Let mm. me ask you because Vic and I we're both producers as well. I'm a producer, a DJ, and I spit. Also, give us give us your different views uh, in the difficulties and the artistry between writing, uh, spitting, and and production, producing music. Uh, give us your take on that. Well, my take is all they all require 100% of your focus. And the reason it's really hard for a producer slash rapper slash label owner to really shine in all three of those areas is because you got to really focus on one. 
So what I do with myself is I, I break it down into parts. You know, I have my artist mode where I'll be in artist mode for about six months. I'll be in production mode, getting ready for artist mode before that, where I'm getting all the beats together, figuring out how I want to lay the album, how I want to lay the song. Then I get into artist mode once the product is done. Then I get into business mode. Ah, uh, no. We've uh, we've spoken about Dr. Dre and how methodical he is when he produces certain tracks, how he'll sit down with an artist uh, for several hours before they even get into the studio and into the lab. Um, do you feel you find yourself at times doing that same thing, trying to uh, attempt to get to know the individual before you sit down and start production? I mean, everybody I work with, you feel me, I got some kind of relationship or some kind of ties with. I got you. Either we in the same game or, you know, we, we move the same way. So it's real easy to relate. And a lot of times, you know, we know the same people if we don't know each other. So it's always usually a fluid vibe. Right. But I try to I try to work with people who music actually I like and people that are actually working to push their careers rather than just trying to have a bunch of songs they got. Yes, sir. K.O., how'd you end up on uh, Las Vegas Strip? By accident. D did you say by um, accident? By accident, actually. I came to Vegas to visit Matt while he was living out here. A few situations came to where I was out here and I had to figure it out. You know, and I had CDs with me, and so I went to the Strip. I mean, I sell CDs all over the country, so that's like second nature but when i went out there i was booming and i made a lot of money and that's people awesome. would give me 20 dollar donations 100 dollar donations so wow. I was like yeah this is where i want to be i bought one of your discs about 10 years ago you were in front of best buy <laughs> in oceanside and uh yeah that and uh it's just crazy how you you can sell your product without a preview I mean, that just shows what kind of businessman you are. And it says a lot about your uh, your hustle. Uh, how do you do that? How do you sell copies? How do you sell a product without giving a taste of what you're selling? It's a good question. Uh, to answer that question, uh, when I started out, it was more of, um, you know, I've always been in sales. I've always been in sales. So selling things is easy. So when I when I was selling the CDs, it was just more. I learned when you go when you approach somebody, you're really selling yourself. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. what the product is. Mm -hmm. So as long Good as the point. person takes you serious and you're legit, you feel me? You're gonna win. The only difference between a con man and a businessman is the businessman delivers. I just make sure I deliver. That is. And if it comes down to it, you want to preview the music, you can. And once they hear it, you know, that's that's almost a shoe in sale. The only reason I don't get the sell is that they don't got cash. There you go. Yeah, KO, when we were mapping out the first artist we were going to go ahead and get booked for the season two of the chapter of the Architect podcast, Big Sherm comes to me and he goes, Hey, I got a great individual uh, in mind. And then he mentioned you and he told me the story about how you went ahead and sold him uh, the CD in Oceanside uh, outside of Best Buy about 10 years ago. And he told me, he goes, hey, to be honest with you, I still bump his CD. So, uh, you That's know, I that. took, yeah, I took that into consideration and I said, all right, man, let's let's go ahead and get a hold of him. And sure enough, here we are. Here we are on this Sunday. We've got you on the phone, man. And we're uh, exceptionally grateful, man. Thank you. Yeah, I wish I could have been in the studio with y'all, but you know, duty call. It's a, a <laughs> it's all good, brother. Ko, um, what studios are you you are you utilizing out there in in Las Vegas? I, I record exclusively at a digital inside recording studios out here. It's um, a really good place. Uh, Kanye West recorded College Drop out there. Really. Um, yeah, they, they got a bunch of platinum plaques when you walk in the wall. Wow, that's you know, dope. A I'm, lot of artists. How much are they charging an hour? I do blocks, so, you know, I don't, I don't pay a little bit unless I can't really say my price on the radio like that because I really do a lot of business with them, and they might quote something different. <laughs> that's correct. That's true. Yeah, you don't want to spoil their uh, their other avenues of, uh, of, of pricing. Exactly. Wow, exactly. yeah. I'm, 
I'm going to definitely uh, try to scope that spot out. I've got an aunt that lives out there in Vegas, man. And uh, let me see if I go down there and check out that spot. Um, K.O. Yeah, tell quick. them I sent you. Absolutely. Tell us about your first experience inside of a studio, man. To me, that's always a magical moment in someone's musical career, the moment they step into uh, an environment with a bunch of musical equipment. They have no idea what it does. Uh, but I know for a fact it's exciting, it's euphoric. Tell us about that first experience. I mean, like, my first studio was my studio. I built it myself. But my first time in actually, like, a real million-dollar studio was in uh, Minnesota at a school called Digital Insight that was trying to recruit me. And uh, they let me... Uh, record one of my tracks in there. It's off of my Lifestyle of a Hustler album called Get Dope. Nice. And it was just like, when I went in there, it was just, it was a totally different feeling, you know, like being a, a rapper producer and having my own shit, it's a different feeling when I'm behind the board and then I got to run in the booth or I'm in my house. <laughs> right. It's, you know, it's, it's a totally different feeling compared to, I really felt like a rapper when I was in there and mm. you could hear it in the way I delivered that song. So from that moment, I made it a point that when I record my music, I want to make sure I got that same feeling and that same energy. You know, um, so. to me, the differences between having your own home studio and going to, let's say a professional studio that you're paying for is the prep time has to be much more tighter, much more impactful uh, when you're going to a paid studio, if you're going to go pay exactly. for a studio, you better make sure your balls, um, well, exactly. the, whether, whether, on, whether they're tight or not is really up to the MC. But you better damn make sure that those uh, balls are memorized so you're not sitting there taking uh, 14, 16, 17 takes uh, because of the lack of discipline didn't make you memorize those bars, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in and out. My, my engineer... He'd be saying, like, man, you got that done fast when the time is money. That's correct. But the beautiful thing about having my own shit as well, because I have my own studio, I still got my own equipment, but I still would prefer going to them until I build it the way that matches the same shit right, I'm paying for. Right. You know what, so, Kale? I love the energy of going to someone else's studio because I, I feel it's like a ceremonial thing. You know what I mean? Like, it's easy for exactly. me to be in my slippers and socks. And for me to lay down a quick 16 bars in my own booth, it's nothing. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I could take more time with it. But if I'm going to someone else's studio, my prep work has to be uh, that much more better. I, I, I'm not going there to play around. I'm going there to go into that booth and destroy uh, and to make sure that I come out of that studio with something uh, that I'm very, very proud of. Not to say that I... That I don't take the same effort into it in my home studio, but it's such a different energy to go to a paid exactly. professional studio. You know, you got to go in there and uh, swing for the for the fences and, and make some home runs happen. Exactly, but by having my own shit, I can pre and I can post. I can get ready, record, yes. get my beat laid out. Yes. I need to go in the studio, record it, then come back and I can master yes. it. Yes. Do everything I need to do. Absolutely. Okay, uh, you might have mentioned it already, me but money. you might have mentioned it already. But as far as like you know, be when do you have like one or two producers that you do go to every time you King need beats Slump. or every time? King Slumps is my go-to guy. Shout out to my nigga King Slumps, the Dago nigga. I fuck with Cricket. That's my guy too. When Mass want to get his mind right and start making some beats again, he's my go-to guy. Okay. And okay. Then myself. Oh, and Dave Moss, man. I, I always got to get Dave Moss on the album, man. I got to holler at him about these two. I need some beat. So those are those producers that you Shout always go to. Guys. If you know you're having a project that you're, you're about to work on, you, you go to those producers first and kind of see if, if oh, see if what they have fits their, what you're looking for, huh? Exactly. You know, Cricket's a legend, you feel me? So I, I got to go to Cricket for that Dago sound. And King Slumps, he, he make them the way I want them. I mean, you can't beat that at all. Mm, outstanding. Very dope. All right, so. yeah, KO. So we're going to go ahead and uh, talk about your song, Call Me. Uh, go ahead and, and tell us about that song, brother. Basically, Call Me came from, basically, I've been moving around trying to handle my business. And 
he was trying to get in touch with me. So I was letting him know in that song, you know, I'm not trying to play you to the side or play you less. I'm just handling my business. So if you want to get in touch with me and you want my attention, you need to make some adequate moves to keep up with the pace that I'm keeping up with. You can hear this podcast in its entirety and all other chapters on iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play. The links to this episode can also be found in the description for your convenience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for listening.